thank you so much, Sean. The uh, University of Edinburgh has been pioneer in the in the um, in fire responsible fire procurement, but not only uh, the social aspects, but also environmental. So it's fantastic to hear you um, explain uh, more in detail what, what you've done. And uh, as as uh, Sean said, the um, APUC, the Advanced Procurement Universities and Colleges of Scotland, is is absolutely pioneer in the in um, this uh, issue. So. I'm very, very uh, happy to share this platform with you. Um, so I'll be, I'll be brief uh, because I've said a lot of the things that um, I wanted to say, but I think it's most, mostly uh, a debate that is probably really helpful in order to share, uh, sharing the practices, but also, you know, it sometimes is demystifying a little bit some of the language that we're using as well. You now, when we uh, refer to um, supplier engagement, transparency. So what does this mean in practice? So um, I, some of the main highlights of the UK practice and, and Sean's presentation really shows this very well uh, that I want to bring up. And then I'll put up, to, up uh, some of the examples from the London University's Purchasing Consortium practice. First of all, it's the element of collaboration. We, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. We cannot do this alone. These are global problems that require global solutions of which we are a piece of, but this cannot be done without us. So without academics, without public procurement professionals, without uh, the companies and the suppliers. So um, Sean's presentation also shows very well that is different levels of, of collaboration. It has to be uh, sector wide collaboration, universities collaborating, learning from each other, sharing practices. We can't just be replicating the same thing in the in different institutions. We can't all be asking the supplier the same things over and over because as well, you know, corporate practice, we know corporate social uh, responsibility practices learn very quickly how to do tick the boxes exercises and how to provide us with very uh, flashy PDFs with happy people uh, in their covers that will make us uh, tick our own box of we uh, uh, inquired about this. So it, building the resources also is very resource intensive. So let's, uh, let's uh, put all our resources and knowledge and practice together. Um, internal collaboration within the institution and uh, the University of uh, <coughs> Edinburgh, as, the, as Sion has uh, said, has actually done this very well uh, uh, you know use the capital you have you have so many academics PhD students uh, students students uh, this is a, a part of their identity as well these uh, are are people who are much more conscious that maybe we were when we do, were doing our studies who uh, for which the the university brand is actually part of their identity so they are not going to tolerate some of the things and and we shouldn't. This is the time they're here and we have the capacity to be part of the new world that they want to be in. So this has to be a world free of abuse and of environmental damage. And it's our responsibility to provide this place for them and to include them in making this 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 their world a better world. So let's use staff, academics, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, department uh, uh, leads, uh, uh, professionals uh, and our students. And then external collaboration. To, uh, again, we don't know what's happening in the factories in the Philippines where, where union uh, busting is going on. Who knows? the uh, worker representatives in the Philippines. How can we uh, get a, a bridge with this uh, workers representative in the Philippines? In the ICT industry, for example, through Electronics Watch. Okay, let's go, let's capitalize on their experience and their, and their uh, resources to actually learn from them and be guided, for example, in this case of um, as uh, uh, we're, as you can see, very involved with Electronics Watch. So external collaboration is key with governmental bodies, with uh, civil society organizations and with our suppliers. And um, this is the main uh, point as well that I want to make engagement with suppliers suppliers are our allies they are our you know where they're contracted by us but also they are the ones that need to change their practices 
they are the ones that have the capacity to implement new uh, practices on the ground and influence their own supply chain. We have leverage, universities have leverage because this, uh, the private sector wants to uh, pro, um, supply to the public sector. It's not just a matter of us thinking, oh, but I have a small contract, I'm just one of the clients. Well, you are an important client, no matter how uh, small your spend is, because you're, you're a client that is prestigious for that uh, uh, private sector. So we have to engage with suppliers beyond uh, certification, tick the box, auditing, and, and then uh, I will make this link when I just uh, present you some of the LUPC examples. And also think again, think about this as a learning process where we are all learning and we don't have the answers. And even I've been a researcher for many years now, and I still don't have many of the answers. And uh, but the, the last element I want to highlight is transparency. We have to be transparent as organizations. We have to tell uh, our constituencies what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and we have to demand the same from our supply chain. Without transparency, we don't know what's happening. And we, if we don't know what's happening, the most vulnerable suffer. So uh, the UK has done very well in pushing uh, organizations to transparency, and we need to continue to you know, do have the initiative to publish our figures, uh, publish our uncertainties, our unknowns, and involve others in this uh, um, uh, need for transparency and accountability. Let's be accountable for the things we do, we do wrong and for the things we did not know. So I wanted to just share quickly the um, LUPC example, because, uh, well, this, the one one that I know particularly, but uh, LUPC, I can put this uh, link in the chat uh, as well. LUPC has this uh, case studies in which it tells us how they have engaged with um, with specific suppliers. So um, at a purchasing consortium, what LUPC does, and the same as APUC, establish framework agreements that then uh, their members can uh, can call off. So in the uh, suppliers that are part of the framework agreements, uh, uh, they're able to follow up to, on, on certain issues. So for example, we have uh, uh, the, our first uh, case study um, it, it, that you find in the website is about the statements. So what the state the UK Mono Slavery Act statements, no? So why is it important that a buyer uh, engages with what's publicly available from the supplier and sometimes not publicly available but the the buyer can demand more transparency so we can hold them to account okay this is what you say you do show me how you do it if you, you tell me you have zero tolerance to you uh, to modern slavery what does this mean in practice and one important uh, uh, element uh, keeps on recurring is when uh, suppliers say we have uh, zero tolerance and we uh, supply exclusively from the UK. So we are able to tell them, listen, there is modern slavery in the UK. So supplying from the UK or supplying for a reputable uh, supplier doesn't mean you're out of risk. So we can work with the suppliers with what they have in public. A special uh, case study uh, in the UK in the, by LUPC has been conducted regarding gowns, ceremonial gowns. We demand our students to rent these gowns for, for uh, graduation. So we're actually making our students be consumers of a series of suppliers. They have no uh, real access to understanding how they work. So it's our responsibility to make uh, these, uh, to engage with this. Uh, suppliers. So how do we engage? We engage, as I said, we can use all sorts of legal tools such as contract clauses, etc. But this dialogue uh, and cooperation, as well as for us to understand where do you source your gowns? Oh, most of the gowns have been sourced from uh, China and uh, China, Turkey, Bangladesh, but there's a lot of the cotton and the polyester that comes from China. Okay, and uh, uh, let me as a buyer understand where are your factories and you as a, as a supplier understand that those audits 
are actually of concern to me as well. So there's a lot of there's been a lot of back and forth about show me your audits and and suppliers really don't want to show the audits because they tend to be confidential information. There are a lot of doubts regarding the impartiality of audits, etc. So by engaging in this transparency, you can actually say, well, hold you accountable to the commitments that you did. If you get an audit that says there's X amount of uh, health and safety risks uh, in my uh, in this particular factory, what happens two years later? Have you uh, uh, complied with, with uh, your commitment to address this? So this has been a project that has been going on for quite long in, in LUPC. The 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 audits, um, sorry, the um, <clears throat> ceremonial gowns. I have seen quite a lot of process progress. Uh, the other important uh, project has been on PPE and on gloves in particular. The the, the gloves one is actually a much uh, uh, earlier than the one that now the uh, massive scandals regarding PPE uh, made in uh, atrocious conditions after the COVID rush of uh, of supply and PPE. So. In this case, um, electronics, what, uh, sorry, LUPC, this is the, in particular, sent one of the, uh, the uh, category manager, which is uh, he's here, his uh, Darren uh, Whitby, which is a colleague that I've worked a lot with, to the factory and said, OK, I am prepared as the buyer, not just to engage with you and ask you for the audit, I want to see the con working conditions. So obviously we can't all do this and for every product and you know we are uh, the the uh, in our day jobs it's not that easy to just shoot off to Malaysia to have a look at the factory but if we transmit this message to the supplier we are prepared to do this because this is as important as it is for us then suppliers do respond. So um these are some of the examples that I wanted to share in uh, good practice. Obviously, we have the advantage of having a modern slavery act that you can always wave and you can always say, uh, I'm concerned about my own compliance with the modern slavery act. What is yours? But uh, and this is why I think it's very important that the uh, Flemish government is here as well. See how a, a strong regulatory uh, framework actually does uh, um, catalyze a, a lot. So I think it's time for, for you uh, to talk and for me to, to listen now. Thank you.